Last week, I felt it on me so strong. I need to get an evangelist. I need to get an evangelist. I just felt it on me. I said, God, please don't make me preach this weekend. I'm just picking. I didn't tell God that. But I felt, I'm like, I need to get somebody. Me and my wife, we racked our brains. We reached out to all our connections. Finally, 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 we found Brother Wayne Wright and his wife. And these are some great people. Amen. They've been on the evangelistical field for a little while. He actually pastored at some point in his life. He's pastored for several years. And so he was preaching in Houston today at 2 o'clock. So we're going to pray that God would speed his car up, make two hours. Amen. But in a safe way, Brother Wainwright, in a safe way. But I know that we're in the will of God here. To do, I want you to lift your hands and say, God, I am positioning myself right now to receive what you have for me to receive. Come on, pray for yourself. God, I want this word to be in my heart. I want this word to fall on ground that is able and ready to receive it. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, Brother Wayne, right? Come on, give the Lord a good hand clap of praise. Has he been good to anybody in the house today? Come on, has he really been good this morning? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord today. And uh, there's so much that I want to say, could say. And, uh, you know, to everything that's been said, my car's fast enough. If God could just blind the police officers, that's really the only thing that matters. <laughs> I want the will of the Holy Ghost to be done today. And uh, God knows exactly what's needed. And he knew what was going to happen today far before Pastor and I were able to link up. or Houston and I were linking up. It really didn't matter. God knew what was needed. And as long as we can just do what God wants, that's really all that matters. And uh, it's such a privilege to be here uh, let me just say thank you to Pastor and Sister Rankin for all of the accommodations. Their hospitality is overwhelming. They such incredible care of us. I mean, we were just blown away uh, in, in the hotel room. Uh, you know, as an evangelist, <laughs> my wife hasn't had to do it as much. I've tried to protect her, but um, I've had to sleep in a few hotels that I shared the bed with some bugs and uh, there's some things that happen on the evangelistical field that just shock you, but boy, I tell you what, they put us up and we just felt like we've been treated like royalty and uh, far better than we deserve. And to them, I say thank you. Y'all are blessed with incredible leadership. And Pastor and Sister Rankin, amen. Give honor to them today. Give honor to Bishop Sister Kite. Uh, this is a treat for me. My bishop was Rodney McDonald. And uh, he actually evangelized when he was, I think, a little younger. And uh, he's went on to meet his reward. But my bishop's wife, I talked to her on my way here and said, I'm going to preach at Bishop and Sister Kite's church, the Rankins. And she said, we absolutely love Brother and Sister Kite. And uh, they meant the world to us, still do. And so it's just a treat for me uh, to stand in this pulpit in this church. And uh, very thankful for men of God. Uh, that have blazed the trail, held on to the truth. Uh, and then, of course, Pastor Rankin steps up, carries the torch, uh, and does exactly what's needed. And I'm just thankful to be in good company today. Amen. Amen. I know you don't know me. I don't know you. Uh, but we know the same God. Amen. <clears throat> and so we can just set aside all of the formalities of I don't know this preacher and I don't know these people and let's just let the Word of God do what it was designed to do and have church today. Amen. Amen. This is a unique falling upon me. Memorial Day weekend. Pentecost Sunday. Trying to tag into both of those somehow. And then follow the will of God. And thankfully it all just kind of worked out. And, uh, and I'm hoping that the Holy Ghost will talk to you today. I'm I'm going to make it as simple as I can. We're going to go old school today if that's all right. Can I go old school on Pentecost Sunday? Amen. Thank you for letting me be here. It is an honor. The book of Acts chapter 20. The book of Acts chapter 20. 
so good to have my lovely wife. She is my best friend in the whole wide world. And uh, I am so thankful God gave me her in my life. I would be lost and miserable without her. And uh, whenever she's with me, uh, it, life is just so much better. And uh, I'm so thankful she made the sacrifice to come and be with me today. Amen. Acts chapter 20. To all the ministry, I give you honor. I don't know who you are, but to you, I do honor you today. and love the ministry and the apostolic movement. I love preachers. Amen. Acts chapter 20 and verse 28. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves, unto all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers. The pastors, for the most part here, uh, that's, that's for the pastors has put us in charge of, and, uh, and so we're thankful for pastors, we're thankful for men of God following the call of God, but that last little phrase there says about his church, he hath purchased with his own blood, his church that he's made men to be overseers of, he, he lets them know you're feeding, but it's my church. I have purchased it with my own blood. Very quickly to the book of Matthew chapter 16. In a very familiar passage of scripture. He looked at Simon Peter. And Jesus said in verse 18. That thou art Peter. And upon this rock. I will build my church. My church, my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Anybody thankful to be a part of that church today? Ooh, hallelujah. Amen. My subject for a few moments today by the help of the Holy Ghost is simply this. Bought with the blood and built on a rock. Come on, it's Pentecost Sunday today. We might as well be Pentecostal. Somebody lift your voice in your hands and ask God to talk to you one more time this morning. God, let your divine and perfect will be accomplished. Anoint every word that's spoken. Let it not be me but you, God. Hide me behind the cross today. That, oh God, your word would be fitly spoken. And that, Lord, it would be for a season this morning. morning in somebody's life everything God, God let it be done according to your will today hallelujah, hallelujah. somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah God bless you you can be seated it's Memorial Day weekend and it's already been said but there has been a price paid for the freedoms that we have. And I am beyond grateful for this country, beyond grateful for the women who have given all. And it is without saying, I'm certainly thankful for God who gave His all that we might enjoy the freedoms of the church that we're in today. And so I'm grateful for all of that. Uh, but if there is anything that I have found uh, in this thing called life, it is that it just does not take too long to find the negative or the wrong in something. You don't have to work 10 years at your job uh, before you recognize the downside of the company or for you to find the few things you don't agree with or like about your boss. It's easy to walk into a, a place of business, the grocery store, a restaurant, wherever you may be, and pick out the wrong in that establishment. My wife has this uncanny ability. I will miss things, won't even, won't even notice it. And she'll walk into a place and elbow me and whisper out the side of her mouth and go, can you believe that? And I'm like, what are you talking about? I didn't even see it. Now, she's good at it, but. She can find it. I'm thankful for that. Uh, I'm very, very grateful for her, her ability to find it. But there's a stain in that ceiling over in the corner over there. 
And I'm like, what? Where? (laughs) This table's wobbly. This chair is loose. And y'all laugh, but most of you been there, done that, know exactly what I'm talking about. It's even to the point that you and I, we can drive down the road. This beautiful country that God lets us live in. And right past all of the beauty, even in, even in this part of, of Texas, we were driving from Cleburne yesterday. And, and it was just the, the rolling hills and everything. It was just the blue sky. And man, it was gorgeous. And you can feel the heat. The warmth of the sunshine beaming down upon you. And you can miss all of the beauty and say, I sure wish they'd fix these potholes in the road. I mean, you got beauty surrounding you on every side of your car. And you hit a bump and go, oh, I wish they'd. These Texas road workers, they're always doing construction. Why don't they actually fix something around here? You know what I'm talking about today. It's just, it's just how we operate as Humanity. It's our nature to consciously or even subconsciously critique or find the wrong in life. And sadly, this bleeds oftentimes into the church. It don't take people too long. Now, I'm just going to be myself this morning. I, 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 I'm leaving in a few moments, and so I, I hope, I hope, I hope y'all will let me be myself. But it don't take people too long to walk into the church and figure out what they like. And what they don't like. And I'm not even just talking about the guest. I'm talking about some saints too. You've developed an uncanny ability to walk in and say, I just don't know if I like it around here. And they they, they never develop the, the root system to plant something and be and bear down and be a blessing where God's trying to plant them. And they walk out the door and go look for something else and they're not happy there. And they're not satisfied at the next church. I'm going to tell you today, you might as well plant roots uh, and say, this is where God has brought me uh, and I'm going to be a part of God's church. Uh, <laughs> the problem is we focus too many times on the wrong things. This is nothing new today. You've heard it. Church is too hot. It's too cold. It's too loud. It's not loud enough. The people, they're too friendly. I wish they'd leave me alone. They're not friendly enough. Nobody talked to me and shook my hand. The people, they love too easily. They, they, they shook the hobo's hand. They gave that rank sinner a hug. How dare they? They don't love easily enough. The preaching's too straight. It's not straight enough. The music's too old-fashioned. The music's too modern. The preacher's too old. The preacher's too young. They're always looking for something wrong in the church. I'm going to tell you today, there is no church that's perfect. This thing is a hospital. And people that are well do not go to the hospital. People that are sick go to the hospital. There's a reason I go to church because I'm not perfect. Somebody said only hypocrites go to church. Why do you think they go to church? Because they're hypocrites. They need some help from God. And you ain't going to find the help you need on the outside. So baby, you might as well come on in on the inside and let the Holy Ghost work on you from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. God, help us to get beyond all of the misconceptions and the misunderstandings about the church and just let the church be what God wants His church to be. I'm going to say it this way. Whatever happened to the church just being the church and letting God have His way and His presence to flow and change the lives of whosoever will. Is that not what happened on the day of Pentecost? They were all in one room, one mind, one place, one accord. They were just following what God wanted and then God showed up and his will took place. Nobody was critiquing what was going on in the upper room. We don't read it in the word of God. Well, we might have a move of... Unity. They were in togetherness and God said, I can do something. Where did we get off as the inhabitants of the earth that he created? 
to start finding the wrong with the church that he built. Who are we? Look at your neighbor say, who are you? I want you to think with me today. Imagine today what would happen even at the Jesus church if we would start looking at not what's wrong with the church. I know this church ain't perfect. I have no idea. It looks perfect to me. I'm an outsider. I have no idea what's wrong with this church, but every church has got something that could use some improving on. But what if you stop looking at what needs improvement and start looking at what's right with God's church? <laughs> Woo. If we looked at it in such a way that all we've seen is the good, it'd be a lot easier to share it with somebody else out there. Oh, you got to come to the Jesus Church. It's the best thing that's ever happened to Victoria, Texas. you got to come to the Jesus Church. I wonder if our perception of the house of God could perhaps stoke the fires of revival like never before in the surrounding area that people started coming from miles around because there was a church that God was filling. There was a church that God was moving. I'm preaching this morning that your perception of God's church, it needs to be looked at in such a way that this is the best thing that's ever happened to you and it'll be the best thing that's ever happened to anybody else too. I, I, I worry that it might be possible that somewhere, tragically, we forgot what the church is. We've forgotten the value that the church brings to the table. We've created this perception, and 2020 did not help it one bit, made it worse, as a matter of fact. We've created this perception that the church can be a hobby, a pastime. It's something we can do if we got a moment on Sunday where we're not doing what we want to do. The reality is the church has got to become a necessity in the world that we live in. When the church becomes optional instead of essential, you might as well get ready to have problems. If your children have to look at you, mom and daddy say, are we going to church this Change the perception of church in your household. If I step on it too much, you ought to raise another generation that's coming up behind us. They ought to just know this is the greatest thing. This is the best thing. This thing called church is how you're going to make it from earth to glory. There is so much right with the church, yet we let hell lead us to believe that there's so much wrong with the church. God, change our perspective today. He called me out of this world uh, and put me into this church for a reason. Uh, I am what I am because of the church. Uh, you are what you are today because of the church. Uh, I found hope in the church. Uh, I found forgiveness in the church. Uh, I found salvation in the church. Uh, I was abused and misused, uh, but I found healing in the church. Uh, healing in my soul. Uh, healing in my mind. Uh, healing in my body. Uh, I found truth in the church I found faith in the church I found friends in the church I found fellowship in the church I found the peace of God I found comfort for my soul I found strength for my weakness I was weary and heavy laden but I found rest in the church I'm going to tell you something I can't look at the church in a wrong way because the church was the only thing there for me when I had problems. Yes, it was. When I had family problems, uh, when my world was turned upside down, uh, through thick and thin, the church uh, has been there for me. Uh, I'm so glad uh, that God let me be part of his church. Uh, I'm so thankful for the church. Uh, I don't see what's wrong with the church. Uh, I see what's right uh, with the church. Hell hates this church. I, I know we can say it at a blatant statement, say, well, that's just the apostolic church. No, hell hates the Jesus church. He hates all the apostolic churches, but there, there's something different about this church. I walked in the door and felt it and went, whew, my Lord. This is something different now. This is how church is supposed to feel like. This is how church is supposed to be like. Uh, and hell would like nothing more than to put this church underground. 
But when this church was birthed on the day of Pentecost, God had a purpose for his church. And I'm here to tell you and every devil listening in this morning, God is not done with his church. Now's not the time for the church to stick its head in the sand. Now's not the time for the church to pretend like everything's okay. Now's not the time for the church to be complacent. It's not time to lay down the weapons of your warfare. It's not time for the church to compromise. It's not time for the church to back down, back up, or back away. It's not time for the church to act like spiritual sissies. We're not living in despair. We're not operating in fear and anxiety. Now's not the time for anything else but for the church to be the church. I submit to you what's in order on this Pentecost Sunday is a fresh reminder of who we really are. We are God's church and we've been bought with the blood and we're built on a rock. We're not just any other organization on the block. We're not just another church in Texas. Not just another building on Main Street. We're the church of the living God. This is not Pastor Rankin's church. This is not the evangelist church. This is not Bishop's church. This is God's church. This church is your church, but it's not your church. This church is my church. It's your church. But this is not my church and your church. Because if we walk away, God's still going to have a church. It's still his church at the end of the day. You can love it. You can hate it. But it's still the truth. You do not own this church. God owns this church. This is his church. Well, I knew I'd hit something right there, but it's the truth anyhow. It don't matter how much money you put in the plate, baby, at the end of the day, it's God that's got this church in the palm of his hand. It's his name that's signed on the documents. He purchased this church with his own blood. And I'm going to say this too just because I feel it, but God put this man in a position of pastoral authority. You can fight him, you can hate him, you can go against him. It's your choice. Nobody's going to say otherwise. Or you could get on board and get with the program and say, I'm going to be part of God's church and all that he's doing in Victoria, Texas. I done lost some of y'all already, but that's all right. It's still God's church and he's still. And it's still built by his hand upon me, that rock. Too early, we barely know each other. But I'm gonna say it like this we're the apostolic church. That's why we sing like apostolics. That's why we shout like apostolics. That's why we pray like apostolics. That's why we preach it. That's why we live it. Because we are apostolic. Anybody apostolic in the building this morning? We gotta remember that in all. In order for us to experience what we have, there was a price that had to be paid. And thank God he was willing to pay that price. Price was higher than any of us would have wanted to pay. Oh, don't act like you're goody two-shoes. You weren't going to pay the price for all the sins of the world. Jesus was willing to pay so that none of us would have to. And I'm going to make it just plain today. I know it's old school, but Christ... did not purchase this church with silver and gold and rubies and pearls from his checkbook he didn't bring a briefcase full of cash in a back alley somewhere he didn't use heaven's credit card he didn't take a loan from the bank this church was not bought with something made from the hands of man or dug from the dust of the earth but the church was bought with the precious blood of the Lamb of God it was not ordinary blood you can't get this kind of blood transfused at the local hospital 
hospital. It wasn't some blood from a donor off the streets. It was the blood of a man that was wounded for our transgression. It was the blood of a man who was bruised for our iniquities. It was the blood of a man whom the chastisement of our peace was upon. And it's his blood that when he shed it, his blood that came from the stripes on his back, it's the blood that would heal all manner of diseases. She said, I got an ear infection. I'm thinking to myself, I got a God who shed blood already. Can I just remind you about this old message called the blood? Uh, It was the blood that he shed 2,000 years ago. uh, But baby, it's still working for healing in your body today. Uh, The blood still flows. Uh, The blood can still heal cancer. The blood can still heal diabetes. Uh, It can still fix your heart problem. Uh, It can still heal arthritis. Uh, It can touch your emotional pain. I feel the healing blood. The virtue of the Holy Ghost walked in this room right now. There's still power in the blood. You may have sickness in your body, but you've got access to the blood. You may have a disease, but you've got the blood. You may have also have the blood you may be afflicted in your mind your spirit but you've got the blood I believe before we leave this house today that we can get back to pleading that blood and you can leave different than you came because there's still wonder working power in the blood it reaches to the highest mountain It flows to the lowest valley and it gives me strength from day to day and it will never lose its power. And the blood that heals your body and that purchased this glorious church is the same blood that can wash your sins away. I told you it was old school this morning. I'm not talking about just any blood. I'm talking about the blood of Christ. Whom the Bible said his blood shall cleanse us from some sins. His blood shall cleanse us from a few sins. His his word said the blood will cleanse you from all sin. Your soul cannot be redeemed with corruptible things uh, such as silver and gold, uh, but your soul can be redeemed uh, with the same blood that bought the church. uh, Well, I'm going to say it anyhow. If you're ever going to see heaven someday, it's not because you accepted Jesus uh, as your personal Savior. If you ever make it in the blood of the Lamb without shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. What can wash away my sins? Uh, Nothing but the blood of Jesus. AA cannot remove your sins, but his blood can. Self-help cannot remove your sins, but the blood can. Therapy will not take your sins away, but the blood can. I'm here to remind somebody you don't have to live in defeat because you've got the blood. You don't have to live in shame and regret because you can be washed in the blood. I'm about to preach myself into a Holy Ghost fit. There's too many people living captive, bound by hell, but I'm here to tell you there's liberty in the blood of Jesus. The Bible said that they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. There's overcoming power in the blood of Jesus today. Do I have a witness in the building that said I was bound, but then I became set free because I had a meeting with the blood of the Lamb.
all right. I'm going to tell you what I feel. Somebody here has been fighting some junk. And it's high time you overcame today. Let me, let, me, let me just say it this way. I don't know of a better day to overcome than on Pentecost Sunday. They call it Pentecost Sunday. It really ought to have been overcoming day. Because that's the day the church was born. The very thing that hell cannot prevail or win against. I'm going to tell you something. I woke up early Saturday morning with a dream. And I'm not one to go around claiming I'm having dreams from God. But I felt very, very serious and feeling like it was a spirit that would be revealed in this service. Uh, and then I walked into the building and felt confirmation in the Holy Ghost uh, that that spirit that is walking amongst the building today is a spirit of condemnation. Uh, and I'm here to tell a saint of God, a precious saint of God, uh, that if you have repented of your sins uh, and been baptized in Jesus' name uh, and filled with the Holy Ghost, uh, and I'm telling you, there's no room for condemnation. Uh, your past is in the blood. Your past does not stand a chance against the blood. I don't care what the devil whispers in your ear. The blood is greater and the blood is stronger. There is now therefore no condemnation which are in Christ Jesus. There are some people in this building right now you have been rendered ineffective for the kingdom of God because you've let your past tie you down. But I submit to you today it's time to let the blood start flowing again and set you free. Your past is in the past. Oh, I knew I'd hit it. I feel it so strongly. That spirit of condemnation uh, has no room in a blood bought mind uh, and a blood bought spirit uh, and a blood bought body. Uh, there's no room for condemnation. Uh, you've been washed in the blood. Of the Holy Ghost, and you're fighting the guilt, the sin, the addictions. The condemnation that life is bringing upon you. The regrets of a sin-filled past, sin-filled life. The remedy today is to be washed in the soul-cleansing, life-changing, sin-remitting blood of the Lamb before you leave today. Can we lift our hands right now? I feel something moving. While I'm preaching, that spirit's whispered in your ear saying it's not for you. I'm telling you it is for you. It's for you and for your children and to all that are afar off. It's the blood that's available for everybody in the building today. Woo. Woo. Come on, that's it. If we don't go any further, this is all right. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost is walking in this building right now. Oh, yeah. I know this is not a popular message. Not everybody's preaching it and singing about it. But I want to preach about the blood. I want to sing about the blood. And the church needs to get back to pleading the blood. Come on, when I was a little boy, they used to stop them off at the church on the way to the hospital. And they would just say, I plead the blood, Bishop. I plead the blood. I plead the blood against this sickness. I plead the blood against this torment. I plead the hey, there's still power in pleading the blood of Jesus. I plead, I plead, I plead the blood. This blood that heals, this blood that saves, this blood that delivers, the blood that bought the church. The most important thing is a price that he paid. That's why I don't just live anyway. And I don't want to dig too much today. It's my first time here. But it's why I don't just live however I choose to live. I live a life pleasing to him. 
It's not really that necessary, preacher. All those rules, all those principles, the lines that are drawn, the do's, the don'ts. Uh, it's not really necessary to live that way, is it? Uh, what? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own. For you have been bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God. Well, it's Bible anyways. <laughs> Maybe you're not very particular with how you manage something you purchase. But when I buy something, it's mine. I'm pretty particular about it. I don't want just anybody touching it. I don't want anybody just wearing my necktie. That I, it's mine. Don't you touch my necktie. That's mine. time but oh God has a lot to say about what he purchased uh, that's why we can say this is not about religiosity this is about relationship this is about pleasing the one that purchased my freedom uh, this is about loving the one that gave his life for me uh, and bought me with his blood uh, I'll dress uh, I'll live uh, I'll talk I'll walk however I need to uh, not because he says it uh, but because I love him enough uh, to live a life pleasing to God I hurry today furthermore not only are we bought with the precious blood but we are built upon the rock that hell cannot prevail against. And that rock that we are built on is not necessarily a physical rock, but rather the revelation of who Jesus Christ is. Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. I'm going to tell you something. You've got to realize that this church is built upon an immovable foundation. We're built on Christ and who He is. That revelation is irreversible. The revelation of the oneness of the Godhead is indisputable. The identity of Christ and his unlimited power is unparalleled and unprecedented. There's no substitute for the rock that the church is built upon. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the oneness of the Godhead. Old school this morning. Uh, the Bible says, Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe, and they tremble. Now, I'm going to tell you something today. The reason hell cannot prevail against this church is because what we're built upon. They understand the power and the identity of who Jesus is. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to preach at all today, okay? I, I, I got to get warmed up. You got to let me get warmed up with you first. Maybe if we ever come back, we'll preach for real. But today, we're just going to preach a little bit, okay? But I'm going to tell you that he is God Almighty. And the devils tremble at the very mention and the thought of the one true God of who you and I serve. This message of the oneness of the Godhead is still relevant today. It's not lost its power. It's not lost its effectiveness. It's I could be wrong but I studied it as much as I could I've asked around I have never found anywhere else in the word of God where hell trembled devils trembled about anything else we preach about prayer they don't tremble it's powerful we need to pray we preach about holiness repentance whatever you want to pray about preach about victory all of them worth preaching about, talking about, reading about. But none of that makes hell tremble. I never found it anywhere else in the Word of God. If it's there, I stand corrected. But I could not find it. The only thing I found that made hell tremble was the oneness of the Godhead. That's it. I'm, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. That's why you're not doing yourself any favors if you don't have a revelation of the oneness of the God. It's the only thing that causes the foundations of hell. Whew. Oh, one of them apostolics just got off in the oneness of the Godhead again. Yes, we did. 
hell get to trembling. We're a one God church, baby. Now hang on just a second. We're going to climb this thing. But it does not have to be profound and deep revelation. It does not have to be complex. You just need to know who is God and how many there are of him. God said, let us make man in our image. There was not three atoms in the dirt. Just one atom, Bishop. God said, we're just going to be one, one, one. And if you believe that there's one God, you're doing well. Anybody want to do well? Get back to believing in one God. Because when you believe in one God, you're believing in the only thing found to cause hell to tremble in their shoes. Why do you think it was commanded to the people of God? Not just any commandment. But Jesus said it's the first commandment. Uh, A scribe came to him and asked, which is the first? Uh, And Jesus answered, the first of all the commandments uh, is hear, O Israel, the Lord our God uh, is one Lord. Uh, It's the foundation uh, that everything else is built upon. If you take the without the oneness of Godhead, holiness does not stand up. Prayer does not stand up. These people that are going out there and praying to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. You know what? I've never figured it out. They say they're co-equal and co-existent, co-powerful. But every time you see it, one's an old man, one's a young man, and the other's a bird. There's things I can do that a dove cannot do. But they're co-equal. I'm not, I'm not dissing anybody today. I'm just saying, if they're co-powerful, how do you pray to one a little bit more than the other? It's just confusing even trying to talk about it. Well, we're all three just the same power, but pray to him first. Well, has he got more authority than you? Because I'd rather just talk to him. And We don't have to worry about it. We're just praying to the one true God. John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I saw one on the throne. It was so important that the Old Testament recorded that the parents were to teach their children, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. I've come with a message from heaven today beyond just another hookup and a connection with another church as an evangelist. But ordained by the Holy Ghost this church has been fighting some things you've been assaulted by hell you've been struggling with spiritual attacks and I don't even know what I'm talking about I'm just telling you what I feel you're wrestling with spirits some of y'all are waking up in the middle of the night sweating and in fear and living in anxiety I'm trying to tell you the answer is get back to the oneness of the Godhead I was on the West Coast, and I'm trying to hurry. I'm almost done. We was in the West Coast, my wife and I, preaching at a church, and I was preaching about the one. I love preaching about the oneness of the Godhead. It's one of my favorite things to preach. I was off on the oneness of the Godhead, and all of a sudden a man had come in just a few minutes before I started preaching, dressed in all black, long black hair. One of the scariest, I'm a, I'm a big, scary-looking dude, but this dude made me look good-looking, and that's hard to do. He walked in and sat down next to a lady on the very back row. I got off on the oneness of the Godhead and I was just a preaching and a going. And all of a sudden he stood up and his knuckles turned white as he gripped the bench in front of him. Before you know it, he stomped out the back door. Place went crazy. Nobody else saw it on anything. Afterwards, the lady walked up to me, tears in her eyes. She said, do you know who that was? I said, no, ma'am. She said, that was my backslidden brother. She said he was filled with the Holy Ghost in the the church we first came into. About the only thing that pastor ever preached was the oneness of the Godhead. She said now he's involved in a satanic cult. And he's possessed by devils. And she said he leaned over to me. And he whispered in my ear, it will not let me sit here with preaching on the oneness of the Godhead. (laughs) the devil cannot sit there and stand still when the oneness of the Godhead is going forth 
That's why if you got problems in your home and you're fighting spirits, uh, you need to not complain and cry and call your neighbor on the phone and say, well, I just don't understand. No, you need to get the Word of God, uh, open it up, flip through those pages, uh, and get back to reading. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, uh, and the Word was God, uh, and the Word was made. made flesh and dwelt among us am I in a one God church this morning and without controversy great is the mystery of godliness God was manifest in the flesh justified in the spirit seen of the angels preached in the Gentiles believed are you hearing me today devils just started trembling because there's something about the oneness message But to us there's but one God, the Father of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. Devils just started trembling. I'm telling you, I feel a shaking in the spirit realm. There's something moving and shifting. Right now as the word of God's going forth, I'm believing that your home is going to be different when you go home today. But you got to get a revelation. He said, I, even I am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. There is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Hell's trembling right now. Anybody else want to help me make hell tremble? Say it with me. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God of all, who's above all, through all, and in you all. And you start bringing it up that there's indeed one Lord. Something begins to happen. Get you some one God verses in your head and in your heart. And let it flow from your lips. More than once I felt things walk into my home. Or the hotel or wherever I was. And I didn't know what else to do but I'd open that Bible. Hear O Israel. The Lord our God. Is one Lord. Oh he's one. You know why they tremble? Because it was just one of him and he kicked out a third of them by himself. And you're wondering if you're on the victory side. Just one God whooped a third of them all. One God kicked him out of heaven all by himself. Not Jehovah Junior and not Jehovah Senior and a little bird flapping around up there. Jesus Christ said, you get out of here. If you don't think one God can walk into your home, your marriage, your life, uh, hey, this is his church. Uh, This is what this thing's built upon. Uh, And on this Pentecost Sunday, you need to be reminded uh, we're bought with the blood uh, and we're built on the rock. I wish I could preach this like I feel it. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Your faith has got to be on blood bought. And I'm built on a rock today. How am I born of God? Born again of the water and the Spirit. And then you're born into the... We don't join the church. We're born into the church. When you do that, you're born into a life of victory over sin, hell, the devil. I'm going to tell you what we're standing in today. This is just my little two cents, all right? The White House, public education system, in the colleges, the hospitals, they are not the greatest institution. The church is the greatest institution in the history of mankind. Hospitals fall, governments crumble. The White House, oh, don't get me started. But the church, because it's been bought with the blood and because we're built on the rock, because we're part of something that even hell, every spirit of depression, 
every demonic force, every anxiety, every worry, it has no power over you because you're in the church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I'm telling you today, the blood is flowing. There's healing for your body today. I know what I'm talking about. There, there's peace for your spirit today. There's victory for you here this morning because of the blood. And then there's victory in the revelation of who he is. That's why we don't worship him because of what we, he has done. We worship him because of who he is. All by himself. He purchased the church and then he built it upon who he is. Now, if that don't make you a believer, if that don't give you hope in your spirit, if that don't put a smile on your face and encourage you from the top of your head to the sole of your feet that you're in a church that cannot be defeated, you're bought with the blood and built on a rock. They're going to play and sing. I'm going to just end it this way today. It's our first time together. I've tried to keep it. Submerged. I don't want to scare you off the first time around. But I feel like it would be appropriate on this Pentecost Sunday. Maybe not everybody wants to come, but there's people that need healing in their body. And I've just told you there's healing power in the blood. And maybe it's in your mind. I don't care what it is, whatever the pain. You ought to step out of your aisle and come to the front of this thing. If you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost, if you've got sin in your life and you want God to take care of all of the mistakes and the failures and the shortcomings, the blood works for you today. But I plead the blood of Jesus right now against every infirmity, against every sickness, against every pain in your mind. I come against it right now by the authority of the word of God. We are going to overcome it today by the blood of a lamb. And we're going to leave with the word of our testimony. Right now, I want you to lift your voices and lift your hands. Come on, somebody start pleading the blood. I need some precious saint of God. I need some mother of Israel to start pleading the blood with me right now. I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the wonder working power of the blood. Come on, Jesus church. Lift your voice. We're apostolic. Get the blood and built on the rock. Come on, there it is. I feel it right there. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo! Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I think about Jesus, what he's done for me. When I think about Jesus and how he set me free. Worship your way. Jesus, Praise your way. Past 
it's under the blood. It's under the blood. It's under the blood. Pentecostal right now. When I think about Jesus, Ooh, what, what is done for me? me? When I think about Jesus, how he set me free. He set me free. Holy Ghost. This is what I feel so strong. I want somebody to hear me right here. Under under Brother Phillips, you hear me? In the revival with Brother Phillips, I get I, I felt God impress me. He said, I confronted some things and I uprooted some things. God said, in this revival, I'm gonna put some things back together. There are some things that's gonna happen under this man's ministry in this church that God is going to put some things back together. You hear me today. God is fixing to put it back together. That's what I heard God tell me. If you need some things put back together in your life, it may be a broken spirit. It may be a broken heart. It may be broken trust. I want you to lift your hands and say, God, I'm ready for it to be put back together. God, I'm ready for it to be put back together.
because of this message today this is God's church this is God's message he can use whoever he wants to to deliver it I'm thankful that he used this man here this morning but sister toy wants to be baptized today so the baptistry is almost full the baptistry is almost full we're fixing to baptize sister joy sister toy today in Jesus name in Jesus name hallelujah 